Well, you join me here today in Salisbury Plain, which for those of you who don't know, is where the army like to play at war. So it's a good job we've got a green van because it might be slightly camouflaged, so we might not get mortared. But this green van here is a T6.1 VW California Coast, and we're gonna take you around it. Well, me and my glamorous assistant are going to start at the front of the van. Now, as you can see, this isn't the bay leaf green colour. So that is an option. That's a metallic paint. I love it. This is my favourite colour for the new T6.1. So I was so chuffed when we got the T6.1 in this colour. It was very exciting. But as you can see, it's got halogen lights on it. It's got the new styling of the front end. It's got the chrome bit as well as a few other extra features. I know it's a bit hit and miss, it's a bit marmite. Some people love it, some people hate it. I love it, I think it looks great. Moving around to the side, the new styling on the T6.1 is to put the name of the type of fan on the side. In this case, because it's a California, it's actually on chrome, which is kind of cool. I know on the transporter, it's all in black. So it's nice to see that in chrome because it really sticks out. Now these California coasts do come with 16 inch alloys as standard. This has come with the standard ones. Bentley's just having a nice drink behind me. It's not just my water's breaking. And um, there are a range of different alloys that you can pick if you want to upgrade. Moving back, the sliding door is on the driver's side in this case. So that's more useful if you're in Europe, not so useful if you're in the UK, but it, obviously it depends on your preference, but it is always going to be on the driver's side in this case. Above that, you've got an awning, a nice wind out awning. And then looking even further up, you've actually got quite a dark colored pop top and actually it makes it really nice inside because it's lovely and dark when you're sleeping upstairs but we'll come to that when I move inside. So as we come around the back you'll notice that this is a tailgate and not barn doors. Now barn doors isn't something that you can specify on the California coast or the ocean. It always comes with a tailgate. It's something I prefer because if it is raining then obviously the door opens and it will cover you so you don't get rained on. Now you'll notice that the windows are very easily seen through. That's because they haven't got a tint on them. Now that is something that you can order. You can put a privacy tint on. However, we prefer to add it later as you can put limo tints on, which means that nobody can see in, but you can see out. Now on this side, you've got access to your electrical point, but also the cap for the water, not to be mistaken for putting fuel in. Do not put fuel in the water tank. That will not go well for you at all. And finally, on the passenger door side, you've got a sliding window which will open unlike the other side on the sliding door you don't have an opening window that side then you've also got access to the diesel filler cap as well you have to open the passenger door to access that but it makes it more secure right that's it for the outside so let's take a look at the inside So powering the VW California Coast is a 150 horsepower engine. That's a two litre turbo diesel, which is mated to the DSG gearbox. That is absolutely fantastic. It's VW's own and I must say, we've lived with this fan for a week now and it has been brilliant. For those of you who follow us, you'll know that we've got our own T6 California Ocean. Now that's a few years old now, but this does feel more sprightly I think than ours and whether that's because it's a new engine or if that's because our engine is slightly older I don't know but it does feel really good and 150 horsepower is certainly more than enough for a van like this. 
Now you'll see that Mini Bentley is sat at the front there and he's sat above an entirely new dashboard. This is probably the biggest change between the T6 and the T6.1 Californias. This whole dash has been completely changed. It now angles sort of towards the driver. It's a really great infotainment system. Absolutely brilliant. Let's have a quick look at it. As you can probably tell, it's a touch screen as you can easily see all our finger marks. This is the 8 inch screen and it comes with DAB radio along with Bluetooth capability so you have access to your contacts and your own music files. There is onboard sat nav and this particular model has an upgraded tyre monitoring system. My favourite part is that it has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. We tend to use Google Maps as a sat-nav and it's much easier to choose your own music to play, along with the ability to access your own apps like podcasts or audiobooks for those longer drives. And then above Mini Bentley, you've got the newly designed control panel for camping. Now this has got some epic new features in that we've really liked seeing. We of course saw these features when we went to the Dusseldorf show last year, but we weren't 100% sure they were going to make it to production. So this is what's actually in the production model and it's very, very cool. Now this is a huge upgrade from the previous T6 California models. This much larger colour display is touchscreen and on switching on tells you how much of the leisure battery you have left in time, plus visually shows you your fresh and grey water levels. The refrigerator power setting is controlled here and can now be set on a timer. You also have a power control and timer for the onboard diesel heater. My favourite new feature has to be the onboard level, which will make parking up so much easier. You can also now control all the onboard lighting from this panel too, as well as using the actual switches on the lights themselves. It also has a few other little features like alarm clocks, timers and control of the rear aircon. One thing VW do very well is they add interior blinds into the van. The ones in the side window are just fabric magnetic ones. The ones in the front window are actually built in, which is really good. And they just slide across and meet in the middle and obviously give you that level of privacy. You'll notice that I'm sat on one of two swivel captain's chairs. These obviously swivel around to give you extra space in the lounge area. The fabric is lovely as well, and I think it's specific to the California coast. Moving on to the kitchen, introduced towards the end of the T6 lifespan, they started doing the split top kitchen, which I absolutely love. It makes washing up so much easier to be able to have that extra space to put things on instead of lifting the whole of the area up instead. So it's really good that the T6.1 has carried on that feature because I really like that, that's nice to see. So of course it comes with a two burner hob as before, plus also a nice large sink with removable bowl. Then also you've got a top loaded fridge. Again, this is slightly different to what we had on our T6. The catches now on all of these three top parts are far, far better. And they also don't have the arm that holds these things up. So that doesn't get in the way anymore. So actually cleaning it is much easier because there's less things to work around. At the end of the kitchen, you've also got one three pin plug plus a couple of USB sockets, which makes things very useful, especially if you've got a kettle that you want to plug in. Now, just next to Bentley's furry bum, you will see that they have a very nice light wood effect on the rest of the kitchen doors. Now, these are very big storage units. You can store an awful lot in them. You've also got a drawer for the cutlery, plus lots of space for cereal and pans and kettles and all sorts of things like that. So there's plenty of storage space in there. Over the kitchen, you've also got that sliding window so you can get plenty of ventilation whilst you're cooking. Now, I mentioned before how much I like the blinds that VW do in these vans. There is a really good blackout blind 
that sits right next to the kitchen that completely cuts out any of the light there's no gaps in it whatsoever and it's very very nicely built in also next to it with this very small window there's a great new feature that i like to see where they've put extra storage in the little window shutter at the back so you can put little trinkets in there maybe put some spices i don't know a few bits of cutlery i don't know now to make sure it's nice and light whilst you're cooking there are three led lights above the kitchen area these are all fully dimmable as well which is quite cool so they can be nice and cozy at night time but also nice and bright whilst you're cooking during the day now that bentley's moved out of the way i can show you the table so of course the iconic sliding table pulls out there's a leg underneath drops down super easy and tons more space whilst you're cooking or eating don't work with dogs or children they said and i'm working with both Moving further back from the kitchen is a very handy wardrobe space. It does have a rail. We use it a lot in our T6 Ocean, which has this as well. Very useful and there's loads of space. It goes really far down. It's got a sliding door on the side as well. So really easy to access, very useful. Myself and Bentley are sat on the rear bench. It is very comfortable. As you can see, he is falling asleep. It would normally be my seat, but he has taken it over and he's a very big dog. But it is very comfy. It's in the same material as the front two seats. It looks really nice, light, airy. Of course, if you are worried about dog hair or things like that, you can get seat covers from a number of different places for these. So that's very handy to know. There's also a huge amount of storage underneath the bench seat. But also, most importantly, it turns into a very nice double-sized bed. So above the downstairs double bed, you've also got even more storage and they've actually made the catch much easier to open. So we tend to put towels and things in ours, but it's a good size cupboard. And one of my absolute favourite features on this van is the fact that this bed downstairs can do this. <laughs> yeah, that's really good that. That'd be my favourite feature. this is a four berth which means there is another bed upstairs and I'm going to show you how that works now the biggest difference in the California coast is this is a manual pop top so it's something you've got to bear in mind but if a nine month pregnant girl can do it then anyone can do it so first you pull this bit back just like a timbre door once that's back there's some clasps here that you just have to undo these are all just safety clasps to make sure that the roof doesn't pop up whilst you're driving along. And then you just use the handy handrail and push up the pop top and that's it done. So the bed upstairs just pushes up and out of the way during the day when you're just cooking or just chilling in the van. But then at night time, of course, it pulls down. You just put it down like so. And come with me, because there's an awesome bed up here. Now the bed upstairs is actually bigger than the one in the seat downstairs. It's preferable for if you've just got two people in the van, they like to sleep upstairs and then leave downstairs for the living space. This also comes with two windows either side. These are opening and they are netted so it lets a lovely breeze through if you want to. You've also got a 12 volt plug up here so you can charge your phone. One thing I also really like is the fact that instead of a slatted base like the previous model had, this has got the Froley springs, which makes it a lot more comfortable. So it's a really comfy bed up here. Moving into the back, in the tailgate, like I say, there's plenty tall enough if you want to shelter from the rain. One lovely thing is it's got this great blind at the back. Again, a nice blackout blind. One thing I really like about the boot space is how much storage there is in there. 
So you end up with the rear end of the bed, or the downstairs bed here, which obviously Bentley sits on whilst we're traveling, which is why we've got the dog guard up there. But also underneath that, there is a ton of storage space there for everything else. So even with traveling with the dog, you still have plenty of space. So next to this rear end of the bed, you've also got another huge cupboard with a sliding door and an opening one. Obviously don't leave that one open when you shut the boot, that will not work out well. And one of VW's most impressive features and something that they've used on many models, but I so love seeing it, is where they store the chairs for the chairs and tables that go outside. So you unzip this bag and lo and behold, there's chairs inside. It is as easy as that. And where do you keep the table? I hear you ask Bentley. Well, that's an excellent question. You should know this though, because you own a T6. However, it's hidden in the door. Just pull that catch and you can lift it out. And it's a really good sized table. As you can see, four legs. And voila, an outdoor table. So just looking at the specification of this van, the VW Coast as standard is about £55,000. This particular van comes in at just around 59,000. So I'm just looking at the additional options here to see where that four grand has been spent. So the first option here is active lane assist with side assist. Now that comes in at 1,386 pounds. I think it's a bit of a waste of money in my opinion. And this is just my opinion, but I don't think you should need active lane assist really for that amount of money. If you're looking to bring the cost down, don't worry about that. The next one here is the Discover Media 8 inch navigation system. Now it's standard, it comes actually with a six and a half inch screen. So for that extra one and a half inches, you're gonna be paying 1,338 pounds. Now we haven't actually seen this six and a half inch screen, so I don't 100% know what it's like. However, I do know that it comes with Apple CarPlay and it also comes with the Android Auto, which are really good features. So if you didn't want to spend that extra bit of money in getting the bigger screen like the one that we've shown in this one, then you could save yourself that money there and still have the Apple CarPlay or the Android system as well. Another option they've put on this van is parking sensors and that's front and rear with park assist. Now as standard again, it actually does come with parking sensors front and rear. The only thing it doesn't come with is the park assist. Now that's going to cost you £342. The park assist just helps you park in a car parking space. If it is something you're worried about, fair enough. £342 is a fair amount to pay for it. However, if it's not something you're bothered about, it's something you could save there to bring that cost down again. We've also got traffic sign recognition for £282. Again, I wouldn't bother with that. And finally, it has tyre pressure monitoring system on it. Now that doesn't mean to say that the standard model doesn't have the tyre pressure monitoring system. It does. The difference is you're going to pay £162 for it to tell you specifically what that tyre pressure is. So it will tell you if the tyres have gone down, if they've, if you've had a puncture, it will still tell you about that if you haven't got this system on it. If you do though, then of course it will tell you the actual pressures in each tyres. But again, I just think you don't necessarily need that so you could save yourself £162. Now just to round it up uh, to that four grand or around four grand, it's just over four grand. Um, there is also the Bayleaf Green Metallic Paint, which isn't a standard paint colour. Now, I absolutely love this colour, so I think it's worth the £762 to add on to the price. However, it is a completely subjective decision, so if you want to just get a standard colour, you absolutely can. And the two standard colours are red or a flat grey, so if that's what you'd like, then you don't have to pay any extra. So what's it like to drive? Well, like I said earlier, it's actually really good to drive and it feels a lot smoother than our T6 does. That might be because it's new, but it might also be because it's got a new engine. But there's a couple of things worth mentioning that would mean that I would really want to test drive one of these before buying it. I think it's really important to mention that there seems to be nowhere to put your left foot. 
in the automatic version. Now I don't remember what it was like when we drove a manual T6.1 recently. I'm not entirely sure what was going on there, but I don't remember it being an issue. But certainly with the automatic, there doesn't seem to be anywhere to put your left foot, which is quite frustrating. Then also, if VW is watching, if you're gonna put a massive manual in the car, at least make the glove box big enough to put it in. We can't fit this in the glove box. So it'd be nice to be able to see the manual fit in the actual glove box. So to summarize, I would say that the extra features on this particular van are maybe not worth getting. If you wanna keep costs down to the 55 grand, then keep it very bog standard because it really does come with an awful lot of kit and we really do believe that. Californias also have a really good habit of maintaining their value. So you can get really good PCP deals and also, We've heard a rumour that at the moment, a lot of dealerships are doing about a 10% off deal on these fans. So that's something to bear in mind as well. So you could get it down to about 50K for the actual VW California. Now, if you're also considering the differences between the coast and the ocean, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel and press the little bell button to make sure that you get notified of any new videos coming because we've got a great video coming that's gonna be discussing the differences between the T6.1 California Coast and the T6.1 California Ocean, which is the upgraded version of this van. Now they start at about eight grand more than the base price of this van. So what do you get extra for that eight grand? Well, we'll be discussing that in the video. Now I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it really informative. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing to the channel really helps us out. It really helps us get hold of these vans so that we can show you around them and give you a really good insight into what you should buy as a consumer. So thank you very, very much for watching and I hope to see you again very, very soon. See ya.